Aerodynamics teaches us that if the geometry of an object remains the same, then it will interact with the air differently at different speeds. Or in other words, the ideal geometry for lift, drag, intake and exhaust is one that changes and adjusts itself in accordance with the flow speed. In any flight plan, an aircraft has to travel at different speeds. Starting from rest, the aircraft ascends to cruise and then slows to land before coming to rest again. So it's clear that if the geometry of the aircraft or its propulsion elements remain the same, then it will either have to be optimized for one flow condition while compromising for all other situations, or it will be a suboptimal solution for every situation. And this principle not just applies to lift generating surfaces, but also to thrust producing propulsion systems. It's not that in existing aircraft, the geometry doesn't change at all. Most of our existing and past designs feature this capability to an extent. For example, the nose of a Concorde is lowered for a better view of the landing strip during landing. A few jets have variable sweep wings for supersonic and subsonic regimes. Fighter jets also feature variable jet nozzles. Landing gears retract for reducing the drag and increasing speed. Thrust reversers are deployed for slowing down aircraft. Wing slats and extended flaps can be observed in an aircraft during landing. So these are just the transformations that are known and in use. In this video, we will cover the geometry transformation technologies that are up and coming. We start with the transwing concept. It is a wing configuration that not only folds but also rotates and in doing so maintains a low profile and footprint during takeoff and landing. It can transition into fixed wing aircraft while maintaining stability and efficiency. Transwing has been developed by Terodynamics. It is scalable and can be used in aircraft ranging from 1.3 kilograms to 34,000 kilograms. In short, transwing is the tilt wing concept with a twist. Recently, a scaled up model has been showcased by Terodynamics. They built the XP4 prototype with a 4 meter wingspan and a fuselage of about 2 meter long. This model successfully showed vertical ascent followed by a smooth transition to cruise. The XP4 runs only on two props in forward flight. If the transferring concept is scalable for aircraft up to 34,000 kilograms, then it can easily be used in urban air mobility vehicles, most of which weigh less than 3,000 kilograms. The second technology that should be mentioned is the folding propeller technology. Many of the eStall aircraft in their design use multiple small propulsors rather than a few larger ones. This is to help them achieve superior takeoff and landing performance. However, once the aircraft takes off and climbs to cruise, then these small propellers get in the way of better performance. One solution to this problem is to fold them and tuck them neatly in slots on the nacelle. This reduces the aircraft drag significantly when they are not in use. NASA is using them in the X-57 and have termed them the pop-up propellers. Larger versions of these foldable propellers are also used in self-launching gliders. Aircraft manufacturer Beltextron are going to use foldable propellers in their upcoming high-speed VTOL. Once the aircraft transitions to cruise, the propellers will fold along with the nacelle to minimize the drag. The thrust during the cruise phase will come from a separate jet that would have the ability to switch between turboshaft and turbofan modes. After looking at transwing and foldable rotors, it would be good at this point to introduce the disc rotor and telescopic propeller. Now, many of you may ask that if a separate jet for cruise on a vertical takeoff aircraft such as the Bell's high-speed VTOL concept is a good idea, then why don't we do it on a helicopter? After all, we've seen that in the popular 80s TV series, Airwolf 2. The reason we don't do it is because of the rotor drag. The rotor creates a huge amount of drag during forward flight, not to mention the lift disc symmetry. To overcome this problem, Boeing and DARPA came up with the disc rotor concept, which can house telescopic rotor blades. In an aircraft with the disc rotor, during the landing phase, the disc would spin and the rotor blades will be pushed out and the process is reversed during takeoff. 
by housing the rotors inside the disc, the drag is minimized during the cruise phase. The concept of telescopic rotors doesn't necessarily need a disc housing. The variable diameter tilt rotor or VDTR designs have been studied for decades. The blades telescope outward to increase the rotor diameter for efficient hover and better auto rotation performance. At higher speeds in airplane mode, the blades retract for more propeller-like diameter. VDTR is seeing renewed interest because of the possibility of application in urban air mobility. Engineers at NASA have always understood the importance of shape-shifting technology in aircraft. They even released a video back in 2008 showing that a morphing wing should bring versatility in flight dynamics which is comparable to birds in flight. A video released four years later showed the different levels of flexibility in wings and approximately when that technology would be achieved. It also showed to a degree the internal structure of the wing. Why is the pursuit of a flexible wing so important? Well, it has been researched that flexible twisting wing design increases the aerodynamic efficiency by up to 41.3% and translational lift production by 35.3%. For pursuing these efficiency increases in future aircraft, NASA is using a multi-pronged approach. In one project called the Spanwise Adapted Wing, or in short the SAW project, they use shape memory alloy. By giving the appropriate signal, that is heat, the wing tips of the aircraft can be folded. In a video, a tube shape actuator can be seen. When this actuator is heated, the wing's outer portion can be rotated up or down by up to 70 degrees. In another project called the MADCAT, which is the acronym for Mission Adaptive Digital Composite Aerostructure Technology, they use tiny modular units called blocks. The modular units can be arranged in repeating lattice-based patterns. The linkages in the lattice provide flexibility and are pushed to change the shape using actuators. The blocks are covered by a flexible pre-stress film to form the wing. There are several sensors on the wing that are monitored by a computer. The algorithm can change the wing shape and twist and bends the wing in real time to make the most efficient form according to the flow. To work out the best shape of the wing during various phases of flight, NASA has another multi-technology testbed called the X-56. The benefits of flexible wings are obvious, that is improved efficiency and improved control. However, there is also a problem that occurs with flexibility. It is called flutter, that is the rapid vibration in the wing structure. If flutter is not dampened, then it can increase and damage the wing. The normal approach to avoid flutter has been to increase the stiffness. This means using a rigid wing, which requires more weight, which in turn means lower efficiency. The other way to avoid flutter is to counteract it in real time with adaptive controls. This is exactly what is being worked out in the X-56 program. There's an extremely good video by the channel Zerot on different types of flexible wings, which also include technologies other than those that are being researched by NASA. In one of the Transformers movie, programmable metal bits called Transformium were shown. They were depicted to have the ability to join up and create any shape. In real life, we have swarm bots technology that is up and coming. Scientists have been able to create shapes with small bots. Each bot is aware not just about its own environment but also about the surrounding bots and can work collectively to create any shape. NASA's MATCAT project can be pushed into that direction if the actuators and the computers controlling them are decentralized. While the technology for completely flexible wings is still more than a decade away but flexifoil wings are already here and have been successfully tested on the Gulfstream 3 jet. Similarly, the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350 wings can flex more than 5 meters and we are already seeing the benefits of reduced turbulence and higher efficiency using them. And with this, the video on aircraft shape transformation technologies is concluded. If you learned something from it, 
then please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.